Richmond. Uh, Senator Neil O'Donnell, you have uh, ten minutes, Senator. Kerem Oigid, the last car earlier was Tanisha Tafalti wrote a rice head in Shanaday to want to echo the words of thanks to the Tanisha for his commitment in engaging with this house and hearing our views and hopefully taking them on board too. I have no doubt about that, Tanisha. Kerem Oigid, we appreciate the opportunity to air our views and engage with you and through you, Irish government officials who are working very diligently in what is a complex, complicated and very uh, challenging time for uh, all of us. Tanisha, you have alluded to the latest uh, uh, news coverage uh, coming from uh, Britain in regards to the proposals, uh, the non-paper, uh, uh, or as Senator Marshall called it, the nonsense uh, paper. And if we take uh, you and the Taoiseach uh, at your word, uh, and I do, um, that this is an absolute uh, non-runner uh, for uh, the Irish government, and indeed I would say for uh, the majority, the vast majority of the people of Ireland, uh, north and south, it's an absolute uh, non-runner. We need to uh, dig a bit deeper uh, and go beyond uh, these papers and look at what has been said uh, today. Uh, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is quoted uh, on Radio 4, BBC Radio 4 this morning, uh, saying that the reality of Brexit uh, is there will need to be customs checks on the island of Ireland after the UK leaves the EU. Now, I will take uh, Senator O'Sullivan's uh, advice uh, to some extent uh, in terms of uh, a spin bell and a hush, because I do believe that this is a very uh, crucial uh, and pivotal uh, time uh, for you and your negotiating colleagues, Tanisha. But I do want to uh, put uh, on the floor of this House a number of other realities, and that is the reality that the people of the North voted to remain. And we should never, ever forget that. The reality of the fact that the Good Friday Agreement, which was overwhelmingly endorsed uh, by the people of Ireland, North and South, <laughs> says that there will be no change to the constitutional uh, status uh, here unless uh, a majority of people consent to it. No one in Ireland, North or South, has consented to Brexit. I know we have rehearsed those arguments, uh, Tanisha, before, but I think they are very fundamental points that uh, need to be repeated, even at this late stage, unfortunately. I have to say, too, uh, Tanisha, in reflecting uh, on uh, the leak uh, last night, and I am sure Senator Marshall felt the same, it is probably uh, the most concerned I have felt uh, since this process uh, began being inflicted upon us uh, over two years ago. So I can only imagine what people uh, along the border uh, are feeling because this is indicative of something. It is indicative of a school of thought within the British establishment that really could not give a hoot about Ireland, um, could not give a hoot about our peace process, about the Good Friday Agreement, about our rights and about our political, social, economic, cultural aspirations for the future. So it is of deep concern, and I do not think uh, as right uh, as you were um, to address it so quickly uh, and so succinctly, uh, Tanisha, I do not think um, that fear and that concern uh, will dissipate uh, any time uh, soon. In page three, uh, Tanisha, of your address uh, to us this afternoon, uh, you reference uh, the backstop, and you know our party's position uh, on the backstop, it's the bottom line, it's the least uh, worst option, and we do uh, wish you well uh, in trying to uh, advance and secure uh, the backstop in terms of the overall uh, negotiation. But I think on the fourth or fifth paragraph down, you say it remains the only viable solution um, that avoids any physical infrastructure and related checks and controls, fully protects the Good Friday Agreement and North-South cooperation, and preserves the All-Ireland all Ireland economy, as well as the integrity of the EU signal market and Ireland's place in it. The other opportunity is within the Good Friday Agreement to protect all of those things, uh, Tanisha, and you know uh, my and indeed our view on that, and that is the opportunity to give uh, a real people's vote. Uh, a people's vote that we all uh, have democratically endorsed and support, and that is the people's vote in the Good Friday Agreement. That is uh, a referendum on our constitutional future. It was, after all, a Fine Gael, uh, Taoiseach, the former uh, Taoiseach, who secured from the EU a commitment that a unified state would enter in its entirety back into the EU. So the Good Friday Agreement is our political life raft. 
it is our escape route out of this Brexit mess being inflicted upon us. So I am all for a people's vote. I am for a people's vote that we all supported and endorsed uh, in the Good Friday uh, Agreement. Uh, Tanisha, I want to put uh, a number of questions to you just in relation to um, the border uh, and the common travel area. Uh, the, the journeys on the common travel area, the latest advice from the Department uh, of the Taoiseach states first that, and this is a quote, um, there are no requirements for passport controls and operation for Irish and British citizens travelling between Ireland and the UK, and there will be no change to this as a result of Brexit. The advice then, uh, in addition to making reference uh, to the separate matter of RNC carriers that may want I ID in the common travel area, it states in contradiction, immigration authorities may also require you to have valid official photo identification which shows your nationality. Therefore, please check that your passport is valid. Now, this is the advice uh, on the Department of the Taoiseach's website. The current legislation uh, tarnished for passport checks uh, is Section 11 of the Immigration Act 2004, which was amended in 2011. Uh, it, in fact, does not just exempt Irish and British citizens from duties to carry passports on journeys from the north or elsewhere in the common travel area, but exempts Irish and other EU citizens, including currently British citizens, the latter of which uh, would, in fact, be affected by Brexit, obviously. There is no other law I am aware of uh, that, apply, that obliges the carrying uh, of other photo ID showing my uh, nationality, for example. So uh, you may not be able, you may have to come back uh, to me, Tanisha, but I wonder if you could, could you confirm that there, is no, that there is in fact no legislation that obliges me or any other uh, EU citizen to carry a passport or other form of photo ID when travelling here uh, from the north? Uh, and could you therefore remedy uh, the online advice if that is uh, in actual fact uh, the case? Um, Tanisha, I also want to ask, uh, is there, uh, and uh, this is a very direct, straightforward question, is there any need at this stage to bring the omnibus bill back before these houses to review it, to reassess it based on some of the political uh, uh, realities, I suppose, that are coming uh, to pass? So, Senator Mage, where am I getting last to hear?